One reason that people are so upset right now with the way things are going in general with the economy is because we've all been sold a lie. You know, when I was growing up, I remember still hearing my parents and my grandparents say, well, you just got to work hard, Michael, you know, and that'll solve all your problems. Well, for a long time, that didn't seem to be true. And there's some luck involved with things as well. Like I've always been a hard worker ever since I got my first job, but the reality is the hard work never really paid off until recently. And depending on which path you decide to take, no matter how hard you work, it might not be enough is the other problem with this. So what I mean is, for example, like I work for myself. I'm here on YouTube now. Prior to this, I was doing real estate. So my level of effort is directly rewarded with income. However, people that work at a regular job don't have that. It was the same thing with real estate. The more clients I meet, more houses I sell, the more money I'll make, right? So the amount of money you make as an entrepreneur is directly in correlation a lot of times with how much work you're willing to put in. But basically the lie that everybody's been sold for a long time is, you know, you get a good education, you buy a house, you invest in the stock market, and you put your trust in the economy that everything is gonna be just fine and you'll retire in 30 or 40 years with a nice nest egg. No pension, of course, 401k only in social security, that's supposed to be your new pension. Already this lie really starts to fall apart when it comes to retirement because investing in a 401k, as we saw during the great financial crisis, is not a guarantee that you're gonna retire with a healthy profit. You know, a lot of people lost 40, 50% of their 401k portfolio values during those times. And the same thing might be happening again soon now that the stock market has once again entered another massive bubble. Get a good education, right? We kind of talked about this a little bit in yesterday's video. You have 70% of people that have student loans delaying big life decisions and or purchases because of their student loan debt. So getting a college education and getting a student loan is supposed to help you succeed financially, not bury you in debt, but actually that's what's happening to people. And then do all this so you can buy a home? Huh, forget it right now. Like pretty much 90% of the US population is priced out of this housing market right now, guys. I mean, it's that bad, it really is. The median home price is a little over $400,000. So in order to buy that at these interest rates, you need to make about $115,000 a year household income and have decent credit and low debts. So how many people qualify for that? Not many. And as you guys can see, I came out to the beach today. I had to at least come out here once and uh, give you guys a little beach video of what it's like over here at Palm Coast before I head back to Miami. And here's why we were sold a lie, because we were told that if you do all these things, then you're going to have a nice successful life, right? Well, now, you know, when you look at just college alone, okay? Between 1999 and 2023, college costs have, have gone up about 189%, way more than the CPI, which rose 83% during that same time frame, by the way. So just in the last, you know, 30 years, less than 30 years, 25 years, we've all lost almost 100% of the purchasing power we used to have in 1999. So that's pretty bad, which means that your dollars don't go nearly as far as they used to. And of course, it's like that with everything, not just the college costs. Look at how much home prices have gone up since then. You know, in the mid 90s or even late 90s, you could still buy a nice home in this country for like 150 grand. Now those days are over. Yeah, there's still some places in this country you can buy a house for 150 grand, but it's either in the middle of nowhere or there's no job opportunities around or the house is dilapidated. And this situation with the college is such a big lie that about half of people who enroll in college today end up dropping out or they end up in a job that requires only a high school education after getting that degree. And they gain basically no economic advantage from attending college, guys. So why is anybody even still doing this? The other big lie that we were sold growing up is that if you work hard and you stay with your company and you're loyal, then you'll move up the ladder, you'll get promotions and all of this. Well, that's proven to be a lie as well because you know all these employers, they want you to be their loyal little lapdog when it comes to getting the work done that they say. But then when times get tough for the company, 
they'll let you go at a moment's notice. Okay, just like that, boom, you're fired. Look what's happening since the beginning of last year, really. We've seen hundreds of thousands of layoffs just like that, where people get little to no warning. Look what happened to the people at Tesla recently. You're talking big six-figure earners that got basically a pink slip overnight and on a Sunday night saying that you're fired by Monday morning, okay? How many of those people thought that they were going to be working at Tesla for the rest of their careers? And the, here's the thing. Layoffs used to be less common back in the day. It was basically the last resort for companies in order to survive. But nowadays, layoffs are just another tool in the toolbox if, you know, if sales start to slump or their balance sheet is not looking so hot, they just use this tool to boost productivity and cut costs for the company. They don't care about you. And say you are one of the lucky ones, guys, who actually does make it through the college industrial complex and you get a high enough paying job, you know, maybe six figures or multiple six figures where you can afford a decent life for yourself. You can guarantee that you're going to be losing a lot of that money to taxes every year, to federal tax. We all can't escape that. And then depending on what state you live in, they take even more. You know, that's one of the reasons I love living here in Florida is because they don't at least take extra of my money, you know? I don't have to pay state income taxes here. And the more money you make, the more that becomes important. You're paying out all this money in taxes, so the more you make, the more they take. And then Whatever's left over, you're supposed to be able to live a good life on, guys. But if you want to have a family and kids, especially own one of these nice houses back here, forget it. I mean, these houses are millions of dollars, just like in Miami. I, mean, I think each one of these houses goes for like at least two, three million dollars over here by the beach. Now, obviously, most people are never going to be able to afford that. And I've shown you guys some more affordable areas around here. The typical house is like, you know, 350 to 450 around here. But even just buying that typical home, that $300,000, $400,000 home, still looking at a $2,800 a month payment. And that's with a 20% down deposit on the house, guys, which is something else most people don't do because you're too busy supporting your lifestyle and paying back that student loan debt to be able to save that 20% down. So it has all been this one giant lie that we've been sold since day one. Now you can make all the arguments you want if this is intentional or not, but I feel like Maybe things have just evolved or changed so quickly that it didn't used to be a lie. Like, for example, my mom just retired at the end of last year, okay? She worked at the post office for almost 40 years she was there. That's like one of the last living examples of being able to have the same job for 40 years and retire with a pension. Because when she started working there, that was something that you could still get. Well, obviously, those days have been long gone for a long time now and hardly anywhere will pay you a pension now at, in retirement. But even then, that's another part of this whole thing that has been a big lie, right? Even if you made it down that dream scenario of having the same job for 40 years and retire with a pension, because of how much the cost of living, because of how much inflation has gone up over the past couple of years, it might not be enough anymore. That's the other thing. Now, this money that you worked for your entire life might not be enough to pay for your lifestyle in retirement because of how much things have gone up, guys. Imagine that feeling of working your whole life thinking you're going to be able to sail into the sunset and then by the time you actually get to the sunset, it starts pouring rain. Now, I've been really enjoying making these fast food videos recently, and uh, I can tell you guys are as well by how many people are watching them. And what we've been covering is how these fast food restaurants are having such a hard time right now because of increased labor costs, increased supply costs, and they're not able to keep their food nearly as cheap as it was before. And it's basically pushing people to either eat at home or go to a different restaurant where they can get more food for the same amount of money or better food for the same amount of money or slightly more. Well, there was a good story today talking about the restaurant chains that are still winning right now that are still doing very well are the ones who haven't been raising prices. That doesn't come as a huge surprise, but what does that tell you? It tells you that everybody is looking for value right now because of how expensive life has gotten, because of inflation, everybody wants a deal, including myself. 
but some restaurants are still crushing it because they're not really raising their prices. They've maybe inched them up a little bit, but not like you've seen at these fast food joints. And some of the most notable examples are places like Wingstop, Texas Roadhouse. In fact, I was thinking about going there for dinner tonight. They have one here in uh, Palm Coast. And Chipotle and Domino. These are the restaurants that are crushing it right now because they're not gouging their customers, guys. In fact, all of these companies have seen double digit increases in their share prices since the beginning of this year. So not all companies are doing bad amongst this shadow recession, but it does make you wonder how long they can continue doing that because they have to still turn a profit. But I think their method is kind of ingenious, right? Like, well, let's keep the prices where they were or still much lower than our competitors. And naturally, we'll just get a lot more people coming through the door and that will boost our sales. We don't need to do advertising. We don't need to be coming up with these gimmicks to get people in the door, just buy one, get one free stuff, nothing like that. Let's just keep our prices fair and we'll retain our customers. And it seems to be working. Like Wingstop, for example, their share prices have gone up 44% year to date and their revenue jumped by more than a third in the first quarter of this year and the same store sales up 21%. Turns out keeping prices the same is a pretty good play on keeping your customers. Versus on the other side of the coin, you have companies like Subway that are desperate right now. Just like McDonald's, they're trying to come up with gimmicks to get people into the door. And what do I mean by gimmicks? Well, Subway's offering a buy one, get one free deal on footlong subs for the month of May, it seems like. Actually, not even the whole month of May. It's only gonna be until May 13th. So you can buy one foot long sub and get one for equal or lesser value for free. And you can get this deal with the app. You gotta get the Subway app to get this deal. But it doesn't stop there. Subway is so desperate that in addition, now through June 30th, for every $25 gift card purchased in restaurant and online, customers will receive a bonus card redeemable for a free six inch sub. If the economy was great, Subway wouldn't have to do this, right? People would still be going into Subway and they'd be doing okay. But instead, they have to come up with these gimmicks, guys. Like, I remember when Subway was the best fast food deal ever. In fact, when I first moved to Miami, they still had this going on. I used to eat at least once a week back then. And it was the $5 foot long. Who doesn't remember that? Everybody remembers the $5 foot long. Where else could you go to another fast food restaurant and get that much food for $5. Like you just couldn't, you know? Nowadays, if you try to go into Subway and order a foot long sub, I mean, you're looking at almost $20 in some cases. All of them are at least $11, $12, and then plus tax, and then they try to get you for a tip on the way out. Nobody ever tipped at Subway when I was growing up. Now they want a tip. There's just all these things, guys, that you have to look at that signal things are not doing as well as we're being told. And I'm gonna keep hammering this point until everybody understands. And I think most of us get it by now. I think most people are on board with it, but there's always new people watching the channel that just discover it for the first time. So if you're new here, what's up? Thanks for being here. But I could literally make every single video about all of the distress and problems that we're seeing with this economy. Here's another one right here. Sirius XM Radio, they lost 445,000 satellite radio subscribers recently and Pandora also lost 64,000 of its premium subscribers. And this is just in the first quarter of 2024, guys. So it's pretty bad. There's a decline from a year earlier loss of 347,000 self-pay subscribers resulted from fewer trial starts in late 2023 and higher first quarter churn. Paid promotional subscribers during the latest quarter fell by 86,000 customers compared to a gain of 66,000 subscribers in the category last year. So just in one year, they went from netting subscribers to now hemorrhaging subscribers. And why? Because people's budgets are finally starting to feel the full effect of this inflation that is not going away. To me, this is totally obvious that people are starting to cut everything out of their life right now that is not an essential. If you don't need it, we're not paying for it anymore. And obviously nobody needs satellite radio. That is just a luxury that nobody needs. You can get radio on your car for free. You know, you don't have to have satellite radio. So for Sirius, they lost 445,000 subscribers in the first quarter. And the same quarter in 2023, they lost 281,000 subscribers. So they were already starting to fall, you know, a year ago, guys. And now it's just getting even worse.
Pandora, for example, they lost 64,000 uh, subscribers this first quarter compared to only a 7,000 subscriber loss last year. So what you can see is this cascading effect. You're starting to see more and more people pull back. You're seeing people canceling subscriptions. You're seeing fast food restaurants start to suffer because the value isn't there anymore. People are not going in there. None of those things are a sign that people really have any substantial amount of money to be out there spending, but you still see stories like home prices still at all-time highs, stock market still at all-time highs, and that gives the illusion that things are going better than they really are. Because for the people who own those assets, it's still going fantastic. If you own stocks and real estate, you're doing great. So now even Sirius, they're starting to look at ways that they can throw in some gimmicks to get people back. You know, they want to uh, put some podcasts behind a paywall or offer a lower cost or even free ad supported version of Sirius XM. It's funny too, guys, because all these platforms, even Netflix did this recently. HBO Max did this. They have like ad supported versions that are either much less expensive or free. And it's funny because every once in a while I see somebody complain in the comments section of the video saying, oh, there's too many ads. Like, well, guess what? You're watching YouTube for free. You can pay to be a premium subscriber if you want to be. I pay for it because I watch a ton of YouTube and you don't have to ever see an ad. But turn on the radio, guys. You think you're going to hear songs 24-7 without ads? No. Even on Sirius XM, they still have ads. They still have, you know, sessions where they stop and talk and things like that. It's not just music 24-7. But things like YouTube here, you could have it just be videos 24-7 and never have to hear an ad if you're a premium subscriber. But if you're not, you can't complain because you're getting a free service. These videos are free. You are watching this and learning this right now for free, which I don't care if you're a premium subscriber or not, guys. It doesn't make any difference to me, by the way. It's just more convenient for you as the viewer if you don't like watching ads. And this is how you know companies like this are in trouble, okay? Their quarterly revenue was actually up. It's at 2.16 billion, which is up 1% from a year ago, same quarter a year ago. But the reason that it's up is because their advertising revenue went up by 7% and their subscription revenue actually fell by 1%. So they're actually losing subscribers, but they're able to charge more per ad, which they probably can use inflation as an excuse for that. Like, oh, our electricity costs are higher. The cost to do this is higher. The cost to do that is higher. So we need to charge more for the ads now. And one of the main reasons people probably subscribe to Sirius XM is because that's where you can listen to Howard Stern. And now they're worried about this too, because next year in 2025 is when his contract expires. So if he leaves Sirius XM, next year, then what's going to be left for people to subscribe to? I mean, I had Sirius XM for free when I bought my Jeep because it was brand new and they give you a free year of Sirius XM and I, I used it, I listened to it. It's cool. You know, you can hear some more specialized stations than you would on the regular radio guys, but it's just not worth a subscription for me. So I don't pay for stuff like that. In fact, I don't even listen to the radio in the car. I listen to my own playlists that I make on my phone. Now, I wanted to share a couple of stories that you guys sent to me that are real life scenarios that are happening to people. Uh, one of them is an insurance increase from one of my viewers and um, this might be more reflective of what people are seeing nationwide even though you might not have these crazy high insurance bills they're still going up by a large percentage okay. So he says that he received his homeowner's insurance policy renewal and the premium increased by 36 percent over last year's premium. So it went from $550 for the year up to $746. And he said his house is worth 500 grand. So that is very low premium. He's up in Oregon. So that's surprisingly low. You know, obviously here in Florida, paying 700 something dollars a year would be a dream for anybody. But the point here is that it was still a 36% increase, guys. That's what you have to look at is the percentage of increase that you're seeing right now. It's just all relative to how much you started with, right? If you have a much lower bill and it goes up by 36% like this, it's not breaking the bank. But if you're already paying five, six, seven thousand dollars a year and it goes up by 36%, that could mean the difference between you still being able to afford your house and not. So John took my advice that I made in my insurance video and uh, he figured out his deductible was only a thousand dollars. So he got his deductible increased to $5,000 
and was actually able to get his premium lower than before at $534 for the year. So, but now John has to take on extra risk, but I think that's smart because like I said in that insurance video, the best way to keep your insurance low is to never make a claim. So who cares what the deductible is because if you have $5,000 worth of damage on your house and that's your deductible, you might as well just fork over the cash, guys, because you're not going to get that low rate if you make a claim. And also, he does mention here that one of the reasons his rate's so low is because he has never made a claim and he only has a policy for catastrophic damage. So he's kind of paying for the bare bones insurance policy, which after everything I've learned about homeowners insurance, sounds pretty smart. So congratulations on that. Now, one of my other viewers, they asked to remain anonymous here, but let's just say they work in the foreclosure industry, okay? And they're in South Carolina, and South Carolina has the highest amount of foreclosures over any other state right now. They sent me this screenshot of their desk and they say this is a stack of the first two weeks of April. We have over 2,000 foreclosure cases going on. And that's just like one office, right? That is a massive mountain worth of paperwork right there. And I would not be wanting to be the one to have to go through that, first of all. But what does this show you guys? It shows you once again that the economy is weaker than we are being told. You would not be seeing the foreclosures be stacked up like that. And that's just the first two weeks of April if things were going great. Everybody would have the money to pay their bills, right? And the most important bill of all to pay is your mortgage. That way you can stay in your house. So I really feel like the dominoes are only just now starting to fall. And over the next couple of years, things are probably going to get a lot worse. You know, there's a lot of everybody saying that we're going to see this big recession after the election, which seems to be highly likely, especially since Fed, the Fed is keeping interest rates higher for longer and just putting more strain on the economy. So really hope you guys enjoyed this uh, Palm Coast series of videos. I know I enjoyed my time up here. For everybody who made it this far, I just wanna say thanks for everybody who uh, said happy birthday to my wife. It really made her very happy. And um, she tried to reply to as many of your messages as she could. And also for a lot of my old school subscribers, I wanna just tell you that yeah, I made a video in the past saying I really didn't like Palm Coast, but it's kind of grown on me. My priorities have changed now that I've gotten older. I like that it's more low key here, nowhere near as crazy as Miami. And there's a possibility I might move up here. My condo is going to be under construction soon. We're going to be going through the whole concrete restoration thing that everybody has to go through. And um, it's going to be a nightmare to live there. So I'm thinking about renting my place out and coming up here for at least a year and trying it out. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't want to wait for my next one to come out, check out this video on the screen right over here and I'll see you back in Miami.